and what I have treasured up in abundance and I start speaking, if I have treasured up in my heart what God has said, faith, blessing, life, it will bring good things into my life. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Durbin with your family of Faith Victory Church right here in the capital city of Frankfort, Kentucky. And delighted to be able to share with you in the truths of God's word once again. Luke 1 37 says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Oh, that's reassuring in the times we're living in. Our God's a God of miracles. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And whatever you may need today or uh, being challenged with, uh, we're here to assist you into victory. And uh, not only by the word, but word and prayer. We have a prayer line right there on your screen, 502-597-4357. It's our help line. And there is, you're not going to get a recording. If I, if I, the, only, the only time you get a recording if the lines are so jammed. Uh, we have several uh, prayer trained ministers waiting to help you and and pray with you or for you on your behalf and if the lines jam up you'll get a voicemail and they'll get right back to you just as soon as one is available so uh take advantage of that now this month we've been looking at the power of our words the power of our words our springboard scripture we find over in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. See, death and life are in the power of the tongue, not in the power of sickness and disease, not in the power of war, not in the power of a car accident, not in the power of whatever. No, it's in the power of the tongue. Our words are vital for success. I'm not talking about being a positive speaker and optimistic. I'm a very optimistic guy. You know, to do to do what I do, the schedule that I keep, and uh, you know, I, I can't let myself uh, get uh, overrun by uh, my schedule. No, I stay optimistic. We're going to meet that goal. We're going to do it in such and such time. And we do it. But I'm, I'm talking more than just being positive. I'm talking about uh, having God's blessing on our lives and on our families, our marriages and ministries, children. Hallelujah. So words are important. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. See? Fear and faith are in the power of the tongue. Cursing and blessing are in the power of our tongue. If I'm speaking constantly the problem, I don't know why nobody does anything for me. I don't know why, why I was raised in this family. I don't know why I didn't, I don't, I, I wouldn't uh, have a silver spoon in my mouth. I don't know why I'm black, why I'm white, why I'm, uh, you know, had to grow up in this state, and I don't know why this and that. And you're always talking that. See, you know, that's not going to get you anywhere. <laughs> well, it'll get you somewhere, but it's not where you want to go. See, you can't keep speaking out. Yeah, it, it might, yeah, you might have had a uh, rough beginning, but that doesn't mean you have to have a rough ending. See, 
That's the power of being born again. See? And if you don't believe words are important, this whole planet is governed by words. All you have to do is go to the library. It's full of words. People's opinions, fiction, fact. See? And uh, God created the worlds with his word. See? And he sent Jesus the word himself. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. John 1.1. 1, 1. And we cannot just be talking goofy, foolish, and expect God's best in our lives. Don't work. And, uh, you know, when my wife and I surrendered our lives to Jesus three decades ago, we were, we were trash talkers. I mean, we were, we, we always were talking bad to each other and bad about ourselves and and uh you know we this whole word thing uh became a reality to us early on this uh, this was not a revelation that we got 10 years after being born again no thank god for a faith preacher that we were watching on television that was speaking out life and we grabbed a hold of it see and, and this scripture is a master key scripture that unlocks other scripture. Death and life are in the power of our tongues. And they that love it, if you keep, if you, if you just keep speaking death, you're going to have the fruit of that, the harvest of that. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. And when you are, when you are uh, talking, you are sowing. When you go to a restaurant, you're looking at the menu. And then the waitress or the waiter comes around and says, are you ready to order? See? And you're going to give them words of what you saw on the menu with full confidence that what you saw was available on the menu is going to be put in front of you in just a few minutes. See, and if something comes that's not what you ordered, you're going to say, this is not what I ordered. Now, that's, a, that's just a simple, practical way of understanding the power of words. There's a chef that you're not seeing that is back there taking words that the waiter or waitress heard from you perhaps wrote down, or if you got one of those that, you know, that they just look at you and say, okay, I got that. But they carry your words that you discovered on the menu, <clears throat> excuse me, back to the chef. And the chef looks at that and prepares that and gives that back to the waiter or the waitress, and they bring it and present it to you. Uh, and it all came off a menu but it came off what you ordered. Listen to me now. You can order financial blessing. Oh, yes, you can. You can order healing. You can order household salvation. When you understand what's on the menu, you got, you got, you got these master chefs that are waiting for your order to come. But you can't, you can't be changing up your order. You can't get up and leave the restaurant before it's, before it's, uh, it's presented to you. How many Christians put their order in and because they didn't get it in a specific amount of time, got up and left? Many. Many, see, some particular orders in God's word takes a little longer. <laughs> There's some divine orchestration that's necessary. 
But our words are so important, and not just any words. See, I can't go, I can't go into the pizza place and order a steak. It's not on the menu. I can't go into the steakhouse and order a pizza. It's not on the menu. I'm in the wrong restaurant. You can't you can't go to God with something that's not on the menu and expect it to come into your life. See, but boy, I tell you what, this menu has pictures. You can see yourself. You, you, you ever uh, been in those restaurants, got all them pictures? You, you stop, you stop reading about it. You start looking at you. I want you, you just point at the picture. I want one of these because the picture looks so good. With God's word creates pictures, but God needs you to speak in a line with what He says. See, so uh, in Matthew chapter 12, in verse 34, it says, O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, your mouth, my mouth, everybody's mouth speaks. Out of abundance. Abundance whatever you have the most of down in there. See, I choose to have God's word more in my belief system, in my heart, than any other words on this planet. And I make sure of that. I surround myself that way. I don't, I don't uh, open myself up to... Uh, what the world is saying, you know, the news media, politicians, goofy preachers that are saying something don't line up with God's word. See, I don't, I don't listen to that. I turn it off. Why? Because I know the power of words. I've seen what the power of words will do. It's healed my body. It's healed my wife's body. See, it's, it took us totally out of debt. It put money into our bank accounts. It caused this ministry to be totally debt free. Been that way for two decades. See, how? Finding out what God's word said and then getting that in abundance within my belief system. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So how much faith do I want? It's left up to how much hearing of God's word will I listen to? Will I meditate on? And the more I do that, the more faith comes. The more faith comes out of the abundance of the heart, the more my mouth speaks correctly in line with what God says. <clears throat> no matter what, no matter what I may be facing. And what I may be facing can be absolutely medically factual. It can be financially factual. But those facts have to submit to the higher power, which is truth. Jesus said, know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Know it. Know it. And it would make you free, financially free, pain-free. <laughs> oh, what a life the believer is supposed to be having, see? See? And all you have to do is get started with this. And we, you know, we're here to help you. The helpline is right there, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Call one of my trained faith ministers, and they'll add their faith to where you may be in this season of your life. 
What's and that's not a sign of weakness. That's a that's a sign of wisdom, huh? because when you call somebody that understands God's word, that speaks life, that knows knows faith, their emotions are not directly involved like yours are. You're the one that's feeling the financial pressure. You're the one that's feeling the marital pressure. You're the one that's feeling that physical pressure, but not not the prayer minister. They're not feeling that. So their emotion, even though they care, their emotion is outside so they can use their faith without being pressured. And so you're getting a faith boost shot. Hallelujah. And that's what, and the devil don't want you to know that, doesn't want you to call. See? It ain't going to cost you nothing. We're not, we're not going to sit there and try to sell you something. We're here to help you. And, and, and all you have to do is call and find that out. If, we're, if, if, if you think we're trying to, uh, you know, hit you up for something, all you have to do is hang up. But that's not the case, and you'll see. Now, back over here in Matthew chapter 12, it says, verse 35, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. Right there. It's, it's read in my Bible. It's Jesus talking. What I have treasured up is what I'm going to speak. We just we already found that out. Now, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And what I have treasured up in abundance, and I start speaking, if I have treasured up in my heart what God has said, faith, blessing, life, it will bring good things into my life. Hallelujah. In every area, all I have to do is read this Bible and discover what God has said. And then, once I see what he has said, I allow that truth to start, you know, marinating <laughs> in my mind, will, and emotions. And I just start soaking in that truth that my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. By his stripes I'm healed. Glory to God. And the more I marinate in that. The more I meditate in that, it goes from here down into my belief system. See? And it becomes a treasure. Yeah, I, I got it treasured up now. See? And I can open up that treasure. Anytime pressure comes, I can open, open up the, and, and, and listen to me. Not just for me personally. I can use what I got treasured up now to help others. Hallelujah. See? And he says right here, Jesus talking, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. Is a dependable car a good thing? Is a house that doesn't have any bugs in it, not in that's in a nice section of town, a good thing. Well, if God wants me to have it, He'll give it to me. No, He won't. No, He won't. God wants me healed; He'll heal me. No, He won't. It's not how it works. Death and life's in the power of your tongue. You keep talking like that, and you're living an iffy life. No. Mm -mm. I, I heard uh, a newsman 
uh, just say, well, we're living in uncertain times. Well, for, for a heathen, even for a Christian that don't know the book, very uncertain. But for me and my house, it's certain. I'm 100% certain. Ain't no sickness and disease going to take my family out. 100% certain. I'm 100% certain that I always have all sufficiency in all things that I can abound unto every good work. I'll never, ever be running on empty again. <laughs> well, how can you be so certain, Pastor Philip? I have a more sure word of prophecy right here. And I've taken in so much of what God has said about what he wants for my life and for any believer's life, that it washed out death talking. It washed out fear living. It washed out curse expectancy. See, and me and my wife, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just telling you, we are living a dream. Do I work hard? Non-stop, non-stop. But it's what I enjoy doing. And God richly blesses me because not because of just what I do for him, but because I'm his son. And I'm talking the way he talks. See, when you, you got to find out what God has said, he has provided through the Lord Jesus Christ. Not what some preacher may have told you. Not what some traditionalist has said. What does this book actually say? And when we discovered a good man out of the good treasure's heart brings forth good things because we'd already experienced the other. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. We already experienced that. We saw what that was. You talk 14-year drug addict, drunk, locked up 20 times, looking at 21 years in penitentiary, me and my wife right in the middle of divorce, hating each other. Why? We were speaking death, fear, curse, Did we want that in our lives? No. Did we know how to change it? No. But somebody that knew the power of words, my wife watching television, the preacher, she thought it was just, you know, a success uh, show. You know, just how to uh, get rich and gave her life to Jesus. And called the helpline, the prayer line. Three days later, I'm walking through my farmhouse, nobody there, cocaine running around my brain, volumes in my veins, and Jesus of Nazareth ah, himself spoke to me in an audible voice. Philip, you don't need anybody but me. Get down on your knees and give your life to me. And what five drug programs couldn't do what the military couldn't do, what the judicial system couldn't do, what my family, friends, my wife, myself couldn't do, Jesus did in a moment of time. Eternally grateful. But I'm still speaking goofy. Even though he put our marriage together. Even though all the sin I'd been involved in was washed in the blood, I still had stinking thinking up here. And I still had an abundance of fear, curse, and death in my vocabulary. But I took the blessing book, the life book, the faith book, and started consuming it every day, every day, working it down in, into our belief system. I didn't, I didn't have nobody teaching uh, me what you're hearing right now. I didn't, I didn't have the, this kind of breakdown in the teaching. But I just was so hungry 
for this new life that I just wanted to find out what this Bible said because uh, I know not everybody gets born again with an audible voice. See, and it shook me to my core. I mean, it it is, you know, you read about Saul on the road to Damascus, has that encounter, gets knocked off his mule or whatever he was riding, and, you know, has <laughs> has that uh, encounter with Jesus. Well, I wasn't on the road to Damascus, but I was on the road to hell. And uh, Jesus interrupted that. And here it is 31 years later. And I know that my words are important. Well, our time's gotten away from us. Think about what's being said. Go back and listen to these messages over and over again. I'll see you next time. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 says the same thing every time you turn there. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Be a blessing. Power of Faith programs are available on YouTube 24-7, so you can watch from anywhere at any time. Search for Power of Faith on YouTube or go to youtube.com forward slash power of faith. Subscribe and click the bell to make sure you're notified whenever new episodes are posted. If you missed the episode, or you just want to go back and watch it over and over again, the Power of Faith YouTube channel is there for you. Living the Dream how I wish somebody would have had a little book like this for me when I first got born again to help me discover destiny and how to pursue what God had for my life. This, you can, this is just a little, little step-by-step -step wisdom on how to see your dream, how to actually live in your dream. I'm living the dream right now. And you know, you can slip it in your pocket, in your purse or whatever, and just pull it out. But there are truths in here that will just catapult you into uh, living your dream. Contact our office if you're interested in that. It'll bless your life.